<laughs> Cato from the Green Hornet represents one of the wonderful times when the number two is way cooler than the main guy. Cato joins the ranks of such greats as Sam from the Lord of the Rings, Starscream, Chewbacca, and the Minions, and he deserves it. But none of that's gonna help him against Jack Reacher. I hate to dunk on the man, but he's just not capable of winning the fight. Reacher's fast and has similar skills, and he is, by all accounts, a substantial fellow. 6'5 and 250 pounds of junk food-fueled muscle. Kato's 5'8", 145, and wearing a chauffeur uniform. So if we compare them using BMI, which is the only math I'm comfortable doing, Jack is 50% bigger than Kato. And that's where all things stop for this, folks. The math. We just fought a little, lot of little fast guys. Rama's gone. Jason Bourne knocked his identity back out of him. Asam, the Bruce Lee clone, donezo. And this isn't going to be any different. Um, you know, Jack Reacher, yeah, he is pretty big. He is definitely a big guy. What's he, like 6'5"? Like, he's humongous. But he also has a, uh, has a tendency sometimes to make uh, humongous miscalculations. And I think um, that would actually go in the favor of Kato. Kato is definitely one of those characters that you don't want to underestimate. You don't want to just look at him and be like, yeah, I can beat you. Nah, man. He's definitely ready to surprise you at any given moment. Well, he's going to have to climb that back like Jack, like Jack the Beanstalk. Jack the Beanstalk have to go up there and take out a giant. He's got no problems doing that. He does it every single day against other people who have weapons, who have guns. I mean, he's about that life, man. He doesn't care. I mean, unlike Jack Reacher, I mean, which I hate to, I hate to even bring this up. But, you know, a man who was definitely, like, killed four people and then were brought to the brink by a guy with a crowbar. Kato, as always, carries all the weight in any given fight. And it, he is somebody who fights with an active handicap every single fight. We have to, he has to carry Brit. It's sometimes uh, other other people nearby. I mean, Britt usually just sits back there talking, and here comes Kato. You have to back up everything Britt says. I mean, it's it's pretty embarrassing to be honest. You know, to have to be like, you know, be like, oh, I'm the Green Hornet, but I'm gonna let my man serve and handle you and you for me. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, and I mean, unfortunately for Jack Reacher, this will be one of those situations where he's just another goon. He's just another goon that what's called that uh, Kato would have to take out. Now, let's be honest though. Jack Reacher is quite capable. I mean, 100%. He is definitely more than capable of like bringing a fight to Kato. Kato, on the other hand, goes out every single night, risks his life fighting, fighting bad guys all the time. We're talking guys that are twice his size, just like Jack Reacher. So, I mean, he's pretty experienced. I, I would say he knows a little bit of something about, about killing giants. I think he knows something about that. So, um, in closing, I would like to say, yeah, man, Kato, you know, um, is definitely more than a match, I think, for Jack Reacher. Unfortunately, no matter how tall Jack Reacher is, I, I think he's going to end up coming up short on this one. Just another goon? I couldn't even hear anything at just another goon. My man Jack Reacher is not just another He's the end boss of Goon. Super genius, riding the bus, sure. Kato rides around his town, fighting crime. Obviously, he's not great at it because he doesn't have to go anywhere else. He never finishes, whereas Reacher goes to a town, cleans it up, off to the next town. The arguments are always the same arguments, resourceful. Yes, resourceful is if you happen to have a giant hydraulic press like the one that killed Terminator 2, yes, you could hit the button and squish Reacher. But if it's just your body, there's nothing you could do. Kato could stand on top of Reacher's head and jump for 100 years and nothing would happen to Reacher.
Like the difference is, is that Kato, once again, is somebody who has to overcome insurmountable odds all the time. Like that's just his way of life. Like Jack Reacher, of course, can like basically, like he can stare down people, but it's because of his size and stature, right? Kato doesn't have that advantage. He has to prove himself in the ring all the time. It's Kato, it's Kato! It's Kato, man. <laughs> we're not talking about like Assam or Bruce Lee. We're talking about Kato. Basically, all the best parts of any given fighter all put into one, into a small package, ready to explode at any given moment. Gotta bring up the fact that Reacher almost, almost died to a guy with a crowbar. Not a gun, not a chainsaw, not a flamethrower, with a crowbar in a pool. He almost got drowned in a pool by a guy with a crowbar. That guy was like half his size. Are you kidding me? I'll, at this point, any argument against Kato beating Jack Reacher is a huge reason. All right, well, in this big battle of Jack Reacher versus the Crowbar, <laughs> I guess I don't have a, a, a lot of final points to make except for the fact that I don't think Kato could take a Crowbar to the melon and just shake it off. And it doesn't matter to me how many other times he had to fight off the first piece. Because if you shoot somebody with a little bullet, that doesn't make them less susceptible to a little bit bigger bullet. Like, you can't build up an immunity to a beating. <laughs> doesn't work that way. <laughs> when asked what would happen in a fight between you and Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee said, see this hand? It's a little Chinese hand. He'd kill me.